Hello children. Today we are again back to study science of class 7. Children, which instrument is used to measure the temperature of a human body? We have read about this in our last classes. Do you remember? The instrument used to measure the temperature of a human body is none other than clinical thermometer. Is not it? Now, we are going to discuss the later part of our chapter that is chapter 4 of class 7 science book that is heat. The first part has been already discussed in our last class. Now let us discuss the remaining part in this lesson. Children, how will we measure the temperature of other things except human body? You know that human body temperature, generally what it is done, it is measured by using a clinical thermometer, is not it? But the other things, how will you measure the temperature? There is also an instrument that is used to measure the temperature of other things except human body. This instrument is known as laboratory thermometer. It's known as laboratory thermometer. Okay, it is different from clinical thermometer because clinical thermometer you use only to measure the temperature of human body. But to measure the temperature of other things as for example, uh, temperature of water, okay, temperature of room or anything, temperature of tea, coffee, anything, you will use this laboratory thermometer. So students don't confuse in regarding clinical thermometer and laboratory thermometer. Let us see the diagram of a laboratory thermometer. This is the diagram of a laboratory thermometer. If you observe this, you will notice that it is not similar to that of a clinical thermometer. In clinical thermometer, you saw that the temperature, it ranges from 35 degrees Celsius to 42 degrees Celsius only. But here you can see that the temperature ranges from minus 10 degrees Celsius to 110 degrees Celsius, is not it? Because this thermometer you will use to measure anything, any other thing other than human body. It may be water also, it may be tea also, it may be any other, any other body, any other thing. Okay, so the temperature might decrease also up to minus 10, it might increase also up to 110. Because of this only, the scale of a laboratory thermometer, you will see that it ranges from minus 10 to 110 degree Celsius. But in clinical thermometer, you have seen that it ranged up from 35 degree Celsius to 42 degree Celsius. This we have discussed in our last class. So this thermometer is also similar to that of a clinical thermometer. It also has a glass tube. This is known as the stem of the thermometer. And inside this glass tube, you will find a capillary tube, small thin pipe-like structure through which this mercury, when you, when you uh, bring it in the touch of a hot object, it increases, mercury level increases through this capillary tube. This tube is known as capillary tube. And the bulb, this is the portion which you actually dip or which you will put inside a hot body to measure it. So this is known as the bulb and inside bulb there is liquid mercury. Now children let us discuss about how heat transfers through a body. To transfer heat there are three modes of transfer of heat. That means heat can transfer from one body to another by three different ways. What are these? Let us study. First is conduction. One mode of transfer of heat is conduction. Second is convection. Third is radiation. Okay. Now let us know what are these different types of process by which heat transfers from one body to another body. How one body to another body? That means if one object is there, it is hot. Another object is there. Suppose this is another object is cold. Cold. Then what will happen? Heat will transfer from this hot body to cold body. Okay, how this actually happen? It can happen from the by these three methods. So these are conduction, convection and radiation. First of all, let us know what is conduction. The process by which heat is transferred directly from a hotter object to a colder object is called conduction. This process is nothing but heat when heat will transfer directly from a hot object 
to a cold object. This one process is called conduction. And how it happens when you bring in touch of a, a when you touch keep in contact a cold object with a hot object, then this from this hot object heat will flow to through to this cold object. Okay, that is only called as conduction. The mode of transfer of heat through solids occur by conduction. That means the, there are three states of matter. You know, one is solid, another is liquid, third is gas. In solids, how heat transfers? Heat transfers by the method of conduction. That means if you bring some hot object near a cold object, if you make bring them in contact, after some time that cold object will also become hot. So this is conduction. And children, we have said that solid through solids heat always transfers by conduction. But all solids do not let heat pass through it. Okay all solids cannot help you to pass heat through it not all solids can pass heat through it only some solids can pass the others which cannot pass are known as bad conductors or poor conductors as this process is conduction one who can let the heat pass from through it is known as good conductors and the other which do not let heat pass through it are known as bad conductors some solids can easily let heat pass through it. There are some solids with, through which heat can easily pass. Okay, These are known as good conductors of heat. As heat is being able to pass, so it, it will be known as good conductors of heat. Now children, what is actually conduction? Let us know. Here in this diagram, you can see that if you take, suppose two bricks you have taken and inside it you have placed a metal strip. Metal strip say, as for example, you can also take the example of an aluminium scale, suppose, scale you have taken, okay. Now you light a candle like this, then what will happen, this portion you, you bring in contact with this candle, this portion, okay. What will happen, slowly and slowly this portion will start to burn and then, this whole scale was earlier it was a cold one but this this portion when you will start heating this portion this portion of the scale will first of all it, be, it will become hot slowly and slowly 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 the entire scale will become hot but which portion of the scale will become hotter first this portion after that this portion after that this portion after that this after that this this okay this happened because of the method of conduction this is happening because of the process of conduction conduction that means heat is being conducted from this point to this point you have seen that when you you have made this flame to touch this heat this heat is being transferred from this candle to this scale when this uh, the, by the process by which when you bring two objects in con contact and by process and through that process if heat transfers from one body to another this method is known as conduction now children in this glass you can see there are many things as for example there is water is also there one compass is also there one scale is there plastic scale one wooden pencil is there and one metal something is there okay so what these things all these things can you say which of the things will allow heat to pass through it All things will not allow heat to pass through it. If you try to pass heat before you what you have used, this is a scale which you have used as a metal scale. But this is a plastic scale. When you heat this plastic scale, it will not make the entire scale hot. It will only melt the scale. Okay. That means plastic do not allow heat to transfer from one its its body. Okay. That means it is a good conductor or a bad conductor. It will be a bad conductor. Similarly, wood. Wood is also a bad conductor of heat. This is a metal. This is something a metal pointed one made up of metal. So this is metallic spoon. This is a spoon actually. And this spoon, it is made up of steel. Steel, when if you heat this spoon, slowly, slowly you will see that this portion of the spoon is also becoming hot. That means it is a good conductor. And this compass is also a good conductor of heat. Now, we can distinguish like this this is a bad conductor bad conductor this is also a bad conductor this scale this uh, spoon is a good conductor 
this uh, compass is also a good conductor and this water children what is this water a good conductor or a bad conductor of heat that we will know in the later part of our class now let us study what is good conductors good conductors are those through which heat can easily pass through what are these these are the substances or objects through which heat can easily pass these are known as good conductors of heat as for example copper copper wire we generally use inside the wires of our electrical appliances so copper allows heat to transfer through it very easily so it is called as good conductor next is aluminium aluminium you have seen kettles and all pans and all these are made up of aluminium aluminium is also a good conductor of heat next is iron iron is also a good conductor of heat if you bring uh, if you heat a piece of iron and if you bring that iron near a suppose aluminium spoon then the aluminium spoon will also become hot then the steel steel is also a good conductor of heat children because as you if you see that if you take a steel bowl and if you put it over a gas or of over an induction pan induction stove you will see that the slowly that bowl is becoming hot okay this is because steel is a good conductor of heat there are some substances also which are not good conductors and the one which are not good conductors these are known as poor conductors okay these objects are known as poor conductors poor conductors or insulators now let us know what are these the solids through which heat cannot transfer easily are called poor conductors there are many solids through which heat cannot transfer easily these solids are known as poor conductors or insulators of heat poor conductors the other name is insulators these are also known as insulators examples of insulators are plastic wood bamboo plastic wood bamboo these are examples of insulator that is why what happened in our earlier picture that we saw here through this uh, plastic scale through this wooden pencil heat could not transfer because these are bad conductors or insulators of heat children we have discussed about the first process of the we have discussed about the first process that is conduction conduction there are two more processes one is convection and the other is radiation let us now study what is radiation radiation what is radiation to this name you can come to know that radiation is the process by which an object radiates its energy radiates means it emits it it's it gives away its energy okay radiation is the transmission of heat in the form of wave energy through space to a material medium if the, you take an object suppose this is an object if this object is hot it will radiate its energy that means it will give away its energy and all other things which is near it they will also slowly and slowly become hot so this process is known as radiation what happens in this process you can see transmission of heat occurs you can see here transmission of heat occurs how it occurs in the form of wave energy i have said you that it radiates heat like waves through space it does not require any medium even if it the of this object it is it was hot this there was something it it was cold and in middle nothing was there no need to bring and make this object to touch this cold object if you bring this hot object to touch this cold object then that process will be conduction but without touching also sometimes this its and heat energy may be given to that cold object this is known as radiation the sun's energy moves towards the earth through the process of radiation children for the sun's energy to reach our earth we do not have anything in between do we have the sun is so up there we are so below here we do not have we don't have any medium do we have something we do not have any solid medium so it comes through air only the heat so this process is known as radiation remember that the sun's energy always moves towards the earth or moves to the earth 
through the process of radiation that means when we are living on the earth during the daytime when sun is shining the places on the earth becomes hot because of this process of transfer of heat that is radiation transfer of heat through radiation do not require any medium that means it does not require anything in between to take the heat earlier what happened when you wanted to transfer the heat from uh, that your candle to that to the other end of the scale you want had to place one end of the scale in contact with the flame but here no need to bring the thing in contact do we go and touch the sun we don't touch the sun without touching the sun also the earth gets hot is not it that is this process is known as radiation our third process is convection remember children there are three processes conduction convection and radiation we have discussed what is conduction and convection now let us discuss what is radiation we have discussed what is conduction and radiation now we will discuss what is convection the process through which heat moves through a gas or a liquid as the hotter part rises up and the cooler part sinks is known as convection now to understand this we will have to see a diagram children in this process what is happening if you want to heat water suppose you want to boil water so what you do you place it over a flame now how water boils see water is not in direct contact with this flame is it it is not it is inside this glass and moreover one plate is also there so it is not in direct contact with the flame but still it will get heated if it was direct in direct content of the contact of the flame that means it is happening conduction is happening but it is not in direct contact that means that's why there will be no conduction here one different process will be here that process is convection now we will know what is convection when you heat this water what happens initially this portion of the water it becomes warm or it becomes hot the lower portion slowly slowly what will happen this lower portion of the water which will become warm warm water is always lighter than hot water okay uh, cold water warm water warm water is light is light warm water is light so what will happen this warm water will slowly go upwards of the kettle or of the beaker and this cold water it will come down again this warm this cold water will get get heated and it will go up again the water which was above will again it will come down in this process what happens the water that is that is warm will go up warm water will go up cold water will come down again warm water will go up cold water will come down warm water will go up cold water will come down in this process what happens the entire water of the pot becomes heated this process is known as convection convection this process of way of heating way of heating something is known as convection so here we can see that the process through which heat moves through a gas or a liquid in that case it was liquid as the hotter part rises up the hot part will go up and the cooler part sinks the cold thing will come down as because hot part is lighter so it becomes light and it goes up and cold part it becomes heavier so it comes down water boils by this process of convection when you boil water we do not see radiation or conduction there we will see that the boiling of water is always taking place through radiation air also heats up due to the process of convection air is also heating the process of heating of air is also done by the process of convection children we will see how it is done by the process of convection okay that means what will happen suppose this is air air if slowly slowly this air gets heated then what will happen suppose here in this this is land this is sun sun will give its energy by the process of radiation we have already studied slowly what will happen this land will become hot and this hot land 
will also radiate its energy and the air which was above it will also start becoming warm now first what will happen the air which is exactly here in the lower part of the ground will become hot the air which is here exactly it will become hot this hot air will be light and because as it is light light means it's thin it will go up and this air which was here it is cold cold air because it is not in direct contact with the land so this will become heavy and it will come down slowly what will happen the hot air which was hot earlier it will again go up there it will not be in, in touch with this land so it will cool down again then again it will come down then in this air will again go up in this process what happens that all the air which is present here the whole air which is present the whole air this whole air will get heated this whole air will get heated So this is the method children actually by how the process of the process of convection it takes place okay now let us see another diagram here this is showing trying to show the convection or the transmission of heat through air air we know that it is happening by convection these two processes are done by convection of heat okay these two processes are done done by convection 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 now here what happens first when you heat a candle there also the air which is exactly here exactly near the flame it will become hot first then what will happen this hot air it will become light due to this this hot air will rise up and this air which was here this air will become will, is already cold so the as it is cold it is heavy so it will come down again it will heat up here and because of becoming lighter it will go up and this air which already moved before up this again becomes cold because it is far away from this flame it will again come down so this process goes on continuing this is the process by which water and air actually gets heated that is the process of convection now children let us study a different topic that is sea breeze and land breeze breeze means nothing but it is the mild air that it blows that blows now let us know what is sea breeze children in this diagram you can see that it is showing the diagram of a daytime okay in daytime what happens air generally blows from sea to land how why sea to land why not land to sea there is one reason okay during the daytime what happens sun shines sea breeze land breeze you can only see near the coastal areas that means the areas which has sea near it in the daytime what happens the sun shines so brightly that it radiates its energy towards the earth and in the meantime first of all what will happen this earth it will become hot or warm because it is easy to warm the soil as compared to that of water water will warm slowly it will become cold only but this land becomes hot very fast then what happens as you know hot air is lighter the air also near it will become hot and it will go up and as it goes up the space which it was covering with air it will it will become empty and you know that air if it goes somewhere that space cannot be empty some other air will come to that place so what happens near the the air which was present exactly above the sea level it will blow towards this land so what is happening this land will get cold blow of wind towards from the sea this process is called sea breeze here what happens hot air it will rise up as it on the land it will rise up and cold cool air from sea comes towards the land this is sea breeze in next diagram we can see this happens during the night time during the night time what happens this land which was heated earlier it got heated earlier in the day now by now when the sun went this land will become cold but this water it took time to heat so now also this water is 
warm during the night time now opposite will happen what will happen as this water is warm the air above it will also be warm and because of this reason the air in the uh, above the sea will rise up and this space will be as this space will become n empty because of this reason what will happen the cool air from the land will now blow towards the sea this is known as land breeze and it happens during the night time here you can see that the hot air from the sea will rise up and the space become empty because of that cool air comes here so you can see here it is written or also sea breeze the wind blowing from the sea towards the land is called sea breeze during the daytime the land gets near the coastal areas heated why it gets heated land because of sun's radiation the sea also gets heated but it takes more time from the land to get heated this is because air on land gets heated and rises up and the hot air is lighter because the empty space will come then the hot air will blow okay the hot air will rise up and because of this the cold air from the sea will blow towards the land this is known as sea breeze it blows from the sea breeze sea this is a very important part children you will need to have to study this well if you understand this then it is of no problem next is land breeze the wind blowing from the land to the sea is called land breeze you can see here in this diagram the wind that is blowing from land to the sea is called land breeze it happens during the night time simply it happens during the night time during night time water cools down more slowly we can see that water will cool down more slowly as compared to land land cools down faster after then what would happen cool air from land it will blow towards the sea this is called land breeze and here hot air will rise up from the sea to upwards and from the land to upwards and it is this that is why cold air from the sea will blow towards the land this is sea breeze children can you tell why what kinds of clothes do we wear in summer and winter or should do we wear in summer and winter we don't generally follow but in summer and winter we must wear different types of clothes not only cotton clothes and all but the colors are also quite different that is need that needs to be worn in summer we prefer very light colored clothes is not it but in winter we generally wear dark colored clothes also do you know why we do so in summer what do we do we wear light colored clothes but in winter what we do we wear dark colored clothes there is a reason behind it let us know what is the reason what happens children you know dark colors what they do or dark things they can absorb more need and therefore we feel comfortable with dark colors generally what happens dark colors they look more beautiful so we feel comfortable with them okay light colors clothes reflect the heat that falls on them and therefore we feel more comfortable them in on wearing in summer what will happen light colors clothes light colored clothes what will happen they will not absorb very much heat they not absorb light colored clothes that's why what will happen it will radiate more heat and because of that the portion of the body it will remain cool but dark color clothes what they do dark color clothes can easily absorb heat and dark color they absorbs only absorbs heat because of this what will happen the person who is wearing this dark color clothes is going to feel very very hot so we wear this type of dark color clothes in winter generally but not in summer in summer we prefer to wear light color clothes woolen clothes keep us warm during the winter during the winter one happens woolen clothes which we wear it keeps us warm in the winter we use woolen clothes wool is a very good conductor of heat or bad conductor it is a bad conductor it is a poor conductor of heat moreover if it would have been a good conductor of heat then what happened if you wear a woolen sweater suppose a woolen sweater and if it is a good conductor 
all the warmth that is inside your body will come out because this, this if it is a good conductor it will allow to pass heat through it that's why all the warmness will come out and because of this you will very easily feel cold so we'll have to wear something which are poor conductors of heat if you wear something which are poor conductors of heat then only you will feel warm wool is a poor conductor of heat therefore what happens air is trapped between the wool fibers the warm air you get trapped between the wool fibers so what will happen it will prevent the flow of heat from our body to outside and also from outside it will not allow to travel inside also because of this reason only we feel warm when we wear woolen things wool not only clothes but wool Suppose you give the choice, uh, you have given the choice of in winter of using either one thick blanket or thin blanket joined together. What would you choose and why? If I give you two blankets, one very thick one and one very thin one, and I tell you that wear any one of the blanket or take any one of the blanket and sleep, which blanket will you choose? Thin one or thick one? You will always choose the thick blanket because thin blanket will allow heat to pass through to your body. But thick blanket will not allow, is not it? Remember, there should always be a layer of air between two blankets. Between two blankets, we must always keep a layer of air. So, children, I hope you have understood the topic well. If you not, you may ask any doubts. And in our next class, we will be studying a new chapter. Thank you.